You came for the pint, but you ended up in Scary Larry's House of Horrors. Wrong turn, bitches. Why you one of our new campers? Angela, this is audio head chef. Well, hello there, Angela. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Pint. It's Scary Larry's House of Horrors, and this is the end of summer special. My name is John. And I'm Angela's cock and balls. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he comes he comes swinging with a spoiler right off the bat. But you know, oh, you know sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You know the pint. You know, you know that we're gonna spoil yeah. shit for you. Uh we are talking about 1983's Sleepaway Camp. And uh this is a movie that is renowned for its uh crazy ending. So if Larry uh didn't just clue you in and you don't know how this movie ended, and you actually do want to watch it before. Please make sure to go find it uh, out there on the interwebs and or on some pay uh, subscription service. Check it out and come back to the show. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's talk about all about Sleepaway Camp. Start the diesel. All head full. Larry, we got to ask on all these Scary Larry episodes, what yeah. was your first experience with Sleepaway Camp? This was, and I remember it very well, this was a mom rental. Okay. Uh, yeah. This I've told the story uh on the pint before when when we as a family first got our our vcr my mother was known uh to go in and rent three four movies at a clip uh for the weekend and bring them home and she would just get the craziest fucking horror movies uh i you know she was responsible for truth or dare or critical madness she was responsible for all the goodies uh the burning prom night they were well prom night we actually saw in the drive-in burning henry portrait of a serial killer was one of her rentals but yeah sleepaway camp i remember that was uh one of her piles that she'd brought home uh along with the free popcorn they gave you at channel one video and uh, that was a Friday or Saturday night watch in the Dwyer household. Popcorn Dropped. out in the Strand? Uh, similar. Yeah. Similar. Quite similar. Uh, you know, no butter, dry, uh, salty. Salty. Salty yeah. as fuck. Yeah. yeah, they put they put it in that box. Remember the box? Like, yes. Yeah. White and, and red. Yeah. Later, a few years later, I was the guy scooping it at Channel One Video into the box when you came in to get your movies on Friday nights. But yeah, this was uh, and you know, little strange watch. I've had I had plenty of strange watches with the parents where it's a little you know uncomfortable spot. I think I've said before the most being the. Uh, the family rape scene and Henry Porch of serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> like sitting there with my parents as uh, you know, a serial killer rapes the mom in front of the children. Yeah. <laughs> like this is this is weird. You go to school the next day and it's like, hey, uh, did you ever watch uh, Henry Portrait of Serial Killer with your parents? And the other kids are like, fuck no, I've seen that movie and fuck no, that'd be so awkward. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. Uh yeah, I, so I, I'm gonna guess this was probably like 86 87 like right around there i was definitely not in high school yet so a couple of years after it came out all right well here's some info on sleepaway camp for you released on november 18th of 1983 written and directed by a guy named robert hilzik uh apparently robert hilzik had gotten some money from uh his mother's uh estate and decided to use it to uh, make a movie. Uh, this movie cost about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make, and overall earned eleven million dollars. So this thing did pretty, pretty fucking well. That's uh, a good even, return. That is a good return. Even though I think overall, I think if you're just talking about like kind of popular-ish nineteen eighty three movies, this is a little bit more fringe. Um, I didn't see this until Larry actually showed it at the Strand. I knew the ending. Because I think the yeah. ending is what this movie kind of rides on. But Larry, you did this maybe five years ago or so for like a summer. This is a perfect summer horror watch, and you yeah, did. Like I think that. it was maybe even earlier, maybe even a little longer. Because this was yeah. this was an early one. It was, uh, I th and I think it was like summer, bloody summer camp. 
Friday the 13th was the headliner, and I opened with Sleepaway Camp. This was the yeah. one Matt Wilson made the fabulous poster with the uh, the the tight gym shorts with the uh, butcher's knife sticking yes. out of the dick hole. Yes, I think yeah. I actually I think I have one of those. I have I have a bunch of your posters in in a, in a binder. Yeah, um, that was one of my favorites of his, definitely. So, uh, so this uh, came out in '83. Uh, uh, there have been sequels. Uh, just so you know, there have been some sequels, but Robert Hiltzik don't was not it. involved in t- in any of the sequels <laughs> until much later. And I guess Larry's saying, "Don't bother." Um, I do know that the first sequel I think stars Bruce Springsteen's sister Pamela. Oh fuck, really? Yeah, I don't know, dude. I probably haven't seen it since it came out. I think it was late '80s, right? Like yeah, '89 uh, or so. Yeah, that was a one one watcher. That was a one watcher. <laughs> Robert Hiltzik really has not a whole lot of credits, but one of his other credits is after about three sequels he was not involved in, he filmed a movie called Return to Sleepaway Camp in 2003. There was all kinds of issues with he wanted to tweak the effects in this thing. So it was finally released to direct a video in 2008. And it is also the only sequel. We'll talk about this in the cast where uh, where the leads come back uh, to the franchise. I've never seen it. You never, okay, so you never saw that one. Okay. No, I'm so believe it or that. not, somehow never. And I know it's uh, I do know. Because I remember the uh, reading about it, probably in Fangoria, that it's a direct sequel to the original, and it ignores the events of the other films. Yeah, I think there was three sequels after the first. Um, Definitely, uh, like two was like Unhappy Campers or some shit, and then I don't remember the name of three. I only remember two and three, but maybe you're right. You could be right. I think it went to four, I think. Filmed in Glens Falls, New York, uh, Fort Edward, New York, and Argyle, New York. And uh, specifically, Argyle, New York is where Camp Alagonquin was Mm. uh, on Summit Lake. And this is a camp that Robert Hiltzik says that he attended when he was a kid. Uh, It was still there, but I guess it was not operational when they filmed this movie. Uh, And it was filmed between September and October of 1982. All right, now that we know a little bit about the making, let's talk about the cast. Hey, who the fuck are you? Huh? Who the fuck are you? All right, so uh, here's the big thing about this cast. I want to bring this up before we even talk about it, Larry. Yeah. Uh, someone, I think uh, I think uh, my, my good buddy Chris Frodell uh, mentioned it when I posted we were doing this episode. Mm-hmm. But I think this is truly like one of the few movies where teenagers are playing teenagers. Like it's not like 35 year olds playing teenagers in this movie. Yeah, no, they were, they were kids. They were, and they were not actors as evidenced by the acting. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You know, I think there's, it's not awful. It's not awful. They talk like kids. They act like kids, very angry kids, but they act like, like, like kids for the most part. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it and we'll talk about it more, but it's not. I'm I'm being goofy. Uh it's it's fine. There's nothing where you're like, woof. Like, you know, I've seen paid actors act worse than these kids do. Right. Definitely. Right. So in the role of Angela Baker, which is the kind of lead role, uh, and she was 13 at the time of filming this, mm-hmm. Felissa Rose. Uh, you might know Felicia Rose from the sequel. Every convention that you've ever been to. <laughs> yeah, every convention, <laughs> horror podcasts. Um, yeah. Every Return, Joe Bob episode. <laughs> Return to Sleepaway Camp. She came back for that. She came back for, not came back, she starred in, I think this sounds like a hilarious movie, Dahmer versus Gacy. <laughs> yeah. That just sounds crazy. And then she was amazing in Victor Crowley. Fucking show stealer, really, yeah. in Victor Crowley. She was hysterical. She's just hysterical. Anybody who's listening, if you've, if you've met her, I'm not saying anything you don't know. If you haven't met her, go to a convention just to meet her. Yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding. She is just a fucking hoot. She's a sweetheart of a woman. Um, God, I remember the horror fest she was at. She was just, she was fucking hysterical, hysterical. And then I saw her maybe like three months later at another convention and she recognized me and ran up screaming. I was like, holy shit, this lady's awesome. She seems very cool. Uh, she is currently 55, still looks fucking good, by the way. I'm not comparing that to sleepaway camp. She was a kid. She grew up very nice and she's married to the singer and lead guitar player of if you're familiar with jackass and 
Bam Margera, uh, CKY, uh, Can't Kill Yourself, that band. Um, she met uh, Dar- Darren Miller, I think is his name. Yeah. And uh, they have like three or four kids. So uh, Jonathan Tiersten plays Ricky Thomas. That is the cousin of Angela. Really not much of anything other than the return to Sleepaway Camp. And he has a band called Ten Tears. Oh. But other than that, not much. I mean, this kid's an all-star in this movie, though, man. This kid should have been as big as the kid who played. Uh, although he didn't make it either, really. Him and Tanner Boyle. There's just that's, like that's my dude. <laughs> there's just like something about these two kids. Ricky is just one of the funniest, most real kids on earth. Uh, one yeah. of the best lines in this movie. Oh yeah, you're gonna is, say it now. <laughs> I'm gonna say it now. I'm gonna say it now. Is during a uh, like an 18 minute long softball scene um, <laughs> where we see every inning and every batter. Um, one of the kids, and like Larry mentioned, all these kids are hostile towards each other. Um, one of these kids tells uh, uh, Ricky to eat shit and die, and Ricky responds with "eat shit and live." <laughs> That's my buddy Frankie Han's favorite, favorite like quote ever. Like it's. That's- Eat shit and live, Bill. Like he's fucking says it all the time. There's 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 two in this movie that really fucking drive it home. And I'll say them both now because I don't want to forget. Eat shit and live, Bill. And Meg, you're a real peckerhead. <laughs> Cause you don't often call a girl a peckerhead. You don't. No. You don't. It's so fucking funny. It's right. so fucking funny. Uh Christopher Collett. Uh, plays Paul. You probably will recognize him the most out of any of the kids in this movie because he did the most uh, back in the eighties. He was in a film with uh, Connecticut horror fest, upcoming guest, Peter Weller called mm-hmm. firstborn uh, where he, uh, Peter Weller was an abusive piece of shit. Uh, was it Terry Gar? Was he, I think it was. Oh my God. Yeah. I forgot yeah. all about that movie. That I was just... an H that was an HBO movie. Uh, and then if you don't know him from firstborn, you probably know him better from, the Manhattan Project, where he built a nuclear bomb, and uh, John Lithgow was like, "Fuck this kid." Yeah, uh, bad news. Also, in the nineties, appeared in the Stephen King miniseries The Langoliers. Oh, did and, he? That yeah, was, that was a bag of shit. I saw it once, I think, and it was a bag of shit. Yeah, I got it. Was, Bron- wasn't Bronson Pinchot? Yes. In? Yeah, like in like a mean guy role. Like that's one of my, have you ever read the Stephen King story? The Langoliers? I have not. No, it's one of my favorites. It's just so bonkers, but it's, it's well-written. And I remember when they were talking about, again, I probably read it in a Fangoria when they were saying, Hey, they're making a movie out of this. I was like, I don't understand how, like there's just some things that can't translate to film. Right. They have to stay in your imagination because it's just too, bonkers and little fucking gremlin like animals eating the earth just it's not going to play well on fucking on television and it did not it came off just fucking goofy Uh, but a great story i think it was was it was it in skeleton crew it might have been in skeleton crew uh but it's a it's one of my favorite stephen king shorts i remember Mm -hmm. seeing it years ago and i remember bronson pinchot being in it i remember they're on a plane, right? Isn't that the one where they're on a plane? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and they that's... go through like a fucking time. Yes. They go through like a time rip, let's call it. And what happens, I mean, I guess I'll spoil it, is like if you stay in that past long enough, that past has to disappear at some point. So there's these little creatures that actually eat everything and destroy everything. Uh, to make the past go away. Right. And like reading it, it was fucking cool and scary. But then as soon as I read in, in probably in Fangoria that they were making a movie out of, it, I was like, there is absolutely no way to translate that into film where it's going to look scary. It's almost like the, the book, the shining, there was no hedge maze in the book. Right. There were hedge creatures yeah, the and topiaries. they moved like they right. would like, and Kubrick wisely didn't do that. And he made the hedge maze thing instead because it's not, it's going to look goofy. And it did. If you saw the TV movie with Rebecca de Mornay, when they, they made the topier and they made them. And it was just like, this is corny. There's just some things that don't translate from book from page to screen. Yeah, and Stephen King, clearly his material doesn't always translate and it doesn't help 
when yep. it's like a three night ABC like miniseries. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, no that, that doesn't necessarily help either. Uh, Christopher Collette uh, became a voice director primarily for the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon franchise. Huh. And he also became, along with his wife, a Pilates instructor, and they owned a Pilates studio. So good for him. Stay in health. Uh, playing, uh, let's see here. Um, Mike Kellen uh, plays. Oh, you know what? I didn't write his name down, but it's Mel. He's the yeah. guy that he's the guy that owns uh, the uh, the camp here. Uh, Connecticut's own. Born in Hartford. Oh yeah, yeah. Educated at Yale. Okay. He died in August of 83 of lung cancer. Never saw this released and was buried in Wethersfield, Connecticut. Fuck. If you want to talk about some of the movies he was in, he was in Midnight Express. Oh, Jesus. And he was in the one of the last movies that you showed. I missed that night and I still haven't seen this movie. It says he was in Just Before Dawn. Oh, yeah. I never put it together, but yeah, he fucking is. Holy shit. He also was a TV staple uh, showing up in episodes of Lost in Space, The Twilight Zone, and Have Gun Will Travel. Wow. Uh, only a couple more because there's really not a lot of people Have here that Have Gun would... Will Travel reads the card of a man. Right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I like uh, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Desiree, Desiree Gould played Aunt Martha. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. What a fucking nut job this lady is. Oh. Yeah. Her fingers. Let's unwrap. Mouth. Let's let's unwrap that fucking oh, character. Oh, <laughs> she wore her raspberry beret, and she fucking that won't nuts. do it all, will it? Mm, no, no, no. I wonder. Mm. Uh, she wow. was. Uh, she was an actress that, the, but not in a whole lot of things. A television movie called "You Can't Go Home Again," uh, "Tales of Poe," and "Under Surveillance." And then finally, uh, for cast, uh, Catherine Cammy plays meg uh she's a working actress um mostly tv shows and still to this day uh she was on all my children guiding light the 2003 uh version of dragnet and ncis la amongst many other things but but a very small cast and uh like like the girl who played uh judy never did anything again right, right? but she plays one of the all-time great like piece of shit bully like teenage kids ever you would think that she could have yeah. especially in the 80s William Zabka ran that through the eighties. Yes, he she, did. She could have been a mean girl, but she never did it anymore. So now interesting. No. Yeah. You missed a couple. You missed a couple of names anyway. What names? Who did I miss? Uh, you missed uh, Darth Vader's father. Uh, James Earl Jones. Dad was the uh, cook. Well, okay. So I read that, but I didn't. So that was his dad. Yes. Okay. I saw his name was Robert Earl Jones. Yeah. Well, is that not a dead giveaway? <laughs> Larry and the, the voice listen, and the fact that he looks just like James Earl Jones. I'm not going to assume that a black guy. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. Okay, fair named enough. Blank Earl Jones is related to another black guy <laughs> named Blank Earl Jones. Okay? But he looks exactly like him. He did look like him. Yes, he did. and sounds exactly like him. I don't know if he sounded exactly like him. But he, he sounded. Did. He sounded. He sounds. If you if you know, I think maybe if you know, you're like, oh, okay. There's the voice. Right. Uh, <clears throat> And also, uh, young um, young Peter, not really a famous guy, uh, but the brother of a famous guy, the situation's brother from the Jersey Shore. Oh, Sorrentino <laughs> or whatever. He's, his name he's is? like Max Sorrentino or something. I actually met him uh, years and years ago. There was a sleepaway camp screening at the Alamo Draft House in Yonkers, and Felissa Rose and Max Sorrentino came out uh, for it and did like a QA after. And I didn't know, I think until then, there somebody was like, Aren't you? Uh, and he's like, Yep, that's my uh, that's my little brother, Mike Sorrentino. Oh, Jesus. Like, holy shit, the situation. <laughs> and can you introduce me to Jay Wow? That's all I care about. Uh, right? Hey, can you introduce me to like 2004 J Wow? That's all. I, that's all I want to know. She um, would punch your fucking dick right off. I would let her punch my dick right off. <laughs> I would let her. Like you give me one shot, you could. Yeah. You, could you could put me in a fucking triangle. Did you, wa did you watch that show? Did you? I watch did that not. Show? I truly did not. I I'm being not an a, Italian man. <laughs> I truly did not. I I caught bits and pieces of it. Yeah, but I did yeah, not yeah. watch it. I will admit that I would catch bits and pieces because I thought Jay Wow was fucking super hot. Oh, she was. Yeah. And um 
And then there was the one other kid. I kind of actually like when Ollie. I would, but he was, I liked him. Like he, he's the, funny. Yeah. He's like the, the DJ kid. Right. Yes. And I also just felt like, you know, being from Connecticut and not really understanding the New Jersey culture and like the hair and everything, yeah. just kind of every once in a while getting sucked into it, but I didn't watch it like on a regular basis. Right. And you're a hundred, you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Like when you're talking about the dudes, like, like Paulie's the only one I could ever picture myself hanging out with. Like, right. Cause he's just like a funny dude. Like, you know, fucking cutting people up like you know making fun of dudes i was like yeah he's he's funny the rest of them are just shit bags i i've, I've seen <laughs> I, can, actually, I think that Vinny's okay too but uh the other two fucking beefhead and sorrentino are just were shit bags maybe they're great now i don't know. I, I think i saw paulie on a couple of those like pop culture talking head shows mm-hmm. you know like i love the 90s and shit like that and yeah. i just i think i remember being like oh this kid seems okay yeah. Um, and and no joke, like Jay Wow could kick me right in the stomach and then <laughs> whatever she wanted to me, it's okay. Yeah, I remember an episode where she punched uh, the situation in the face. I was like, yeah, good, good. I was like, oh, we good. all want to do it, honey. Good. Don't, don't punch him <laughs> on the top of the head, though. You fucking your handle shatter. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Larry, this movie starts off on a lake, and we have got <clears throat> a bunch of things happening here. We've got kids speedboating. Yeah. We have a girl on the back of the speedboat skiing. Yes. And then we got gay guys, gay guys and their kids. Um, <laughs> well, this, well, okay. So gay we, guys and one of their kids. Right. Well, two, yeah. there's two kids there. Well, it's one of the gay guys kids. It's not both of their kids. Oh, okay. I'm all right. Well, you're, you're cluing me into something here. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is, you know, this is something I think it takes a while to unpack what the situation. <laughs> there we oh! go. Again. Oh, 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 cabs are here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh now it's gonna be a jersey shore night we're gonna gym tan and laundry uh so I remember that <laughs> gtl i remember hearing that early days of the interwebs of, of yeah. social media is gto <laughs> yeah the and, and the end of mtv right i think that's yeah. when like music videos what like fucking finally went away like Lindsay didn't watch um uh that show either but you know what Lindsay was big on was teen mom like oh, that I never was, even heard of that one. Oh, that's that's fucking that's just like that's like Walmart in a fucking can. Like <laughs> sixteen year old girls and their baby daddies. And oh, like, great. It's, oh yeah, that was that was a mess. That was God bless mess. America. MTV. Okay. Yeah. So here's and I don't know that I've actually ever read a synopsis, but the way I've always uh figured this is so there's two guys all right the one on the raft with uh the schemers as he calls them after they push him into the water right is those are his kids and then that's his lover on the beach yeah that that's what i meant it's it's those two kids are his kids Right. No, they're not the, but they're not the one on the beach. They're the one. No, no I know. I know that he's. he's oh, okay. Like, I thought you thought they were like a married couple. No, 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 no. I, I know that they're like, oh, okay. Like, they don't get okay. into it, but it's like, he's divorced. He has the kids. He ended up with a guy and it's all like, look, we're, we're joking about it because I think that there's a, a element of, of it being kind of funny, but yep. like super progressive for 1983. To have a gay couple at all in a movie in 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 the eighties is fucking bananas. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so they're they're on their boat and they end up uh, capsizing. Meanwhile, Bikini Girl desperately wants Frat Boy to let her drive the speedboat. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I can't do that. I'll lose my license. Uh, I'll whatever. He's going. He's being reasonable. And then finally, his dick takes over, and she's like, "Come on." He's like, yeah. "Sure." As soon as this fucking dumb bitch gets in the driver's seat, Larry, she just like she's not paying attention. Right. And what what happens? So, as the goddamn water skier gives the performance of her life, yeah, she's doing. <laughs> yeah, she's she, yeah. she's crushing it, right? Oh my god! Turn the boat. Yeah, we're all gonna die. Why, God? Why? Like she is just fucking losing it. Girl driving the boat somehow doesn't notice the three people in the water and the large capsized sailboat. Yeah. And 
can't figure out how to turn the wheel or kill the engine or I mean, downshift. Even like, the kid's trying to stop it. And he, and yeah, he the kid tries to stop it and he throws it into fucking high fucking. <laughs> He blasts the turbometer, <laughs> which, which I don't know if that was a choice. I had a situation. <laughs> cabs are here. G-G-L. I had a, where I was driving down 25 in Monroe and there's an, there's a few areas where it's just one lane on either side. You're going on one way. Cars are coming the other way. And on either side are like fucking swamps. Like, so a fucking big Turkey just jumps up or some kind of big bird jumps up onto the road right in front of my car. I'm doing like 45. There's a car coming the other way. I got swamps on either side. So I just stepped on the gas. and was like, let's make this as quick as possible for you. <laughs> you know, and just cloud a giant cloud of feathers. And uh, that was the end. He died quickly. So I don't know if that's what he was like. Oh, fuck it. We're going to hit these guys anyway. Might as well uh, kill him as quick as possible. It's fucking brutal. It is brutal. brutal. He fucking runs over. Uh, you see the dad is clearly dead. He's floating on his face. You see a mangled uh, life preserver. What's that called? Life vest. Life vest, yeah. And then you do see one other kid. Looks like he survived. He's just floating. He, she, whatever, floating there. And meanwhile, the, and meanwhile, the-, the lover is just shock faced on the beach. The fucking water, water skier, skier is just screaming, freaking the fuck out. It's hilarious. Yeah. Oh it's my hilarious. God. Call a doctor, jump in the water, help him, help them. She's like, like, she's like yelling like, what happened? If I jumped into the water, she would get a slap before I looked yeah. to attend to the other people. Cause she needs to be calmed down. Yeah. She's just, you know, she's like the like the crazy person freaking out on the airplane where everybody's in line to fucking Take shake her, it. slap her, hit her with a bat. Basically, that's what she's doing. It's like, all right, settle down, honey. Settle down. It's all, so what's done is done. Eight years, it says, eight yeah. years later. Eight and years later. we are now in the extremely weird household of, uh, of the aunt. Yeah. Who, as we said before, it was not a joke. She's just talking to herself and she's apparently a doctor and her son, Ricky. Yes. And well, she uh, calls Richard, but it's Ricky, Ricky and her niece, Ricky's mm-hmm. cousin, Angela, who yep. doesn't say a peep for the most part at all. Uh, I think I read it was 31 minutes before she says a word in this movie. Uh, she tells them that they're going to camp, that she got them their physicals, but don't tell anybody how you got your physical. Nobody because they know. wouldn't approve. No, right. I don't think they would. I don't think they would approve. Uh, she gives not at all some snacks and sends them on their way. We just really have like, there's a really strange undertone there. We get to the camp now, Larry, one of the things about this movie is, do you notice how, cause they had to film this thing in, in the fall, like how it's supposed to be summertime, but like a lot of the leaves are, are the wrong color. Like a lot of leaves started changing in this movie. All the leaves are brown. All All the leaves are brown. And, and the, the sky, sky is gray. Oh yeah. And the sky is gray. Don't don't get me to the Denny Doherty part. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've stepped into a church. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, we get to the first day of camp, and it is a bunch of campers getting off buses, yep. just freaking out, being excited. And yep. apparently, Darth Vader's dad and the rest yep. of the kitchen crew are watching this happen. But meanwhile, one member of the kitchen crew is grossing me the fuck out he's like he's just like oh man look at uh, you know when they're that age, i like to call them baldies like baldies dude, yes bro. it's so gross this big heavy set guy yeah uh, it, and 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 fucking darth vader's dad is just kind of like oh you yeah you silly man like yeah like no can we not can we not encourage this behavior so i'm i'm very very concerned about what this guy's up to yeah, it's it's pretty gross. Uh, yeah. So Ricky is explaining to Angela that she's going to be going to the girl bunks. Yeah. And last year he was hot and heavy with this girl named Judy, who mm. when he sees Judy for the first time now, she's apparently grown up and now she's got all these other boys attention. What has she? Well, I mean, well, Paul comes up to Paul's like, hey, Paul's like, you got to check out. Yeah. Uh, wait, do you see Judy? Fuck. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, I don't think I think Paul needs glasses. Paul might need glasses. Yeah. I'm like, uh, Paul, 
But but Judy apparently is a hot commodity, and she knows it, right? Oh she's, yeah, she she's this. She doesn't want anything to do with Ricky. Uh, yeah. So we we kind of get like the friend groups. Paul and Ricky are best friends, and uh, and we meet Meg. Meg is simultaneously a camp counselor mm-hmm. and a bully. Like uh, mm-hmm. she is pulling off a trifecta because the third part of the trifecta is Meg is apparently fucking Mel. Oh, can we? Guy, let's get let's dig into this. He's oh. okay. So in your head, if you've never seen this movie, yeah. you're thinking like, okay, so these are younger girls. Yeah. If she's a counselor, she's got, she's like 16, 17 she's tops. She's older than the other girls. But still 16, 17 tops. No, right, right. I'm just, I'm trying to separate that she's not 13 at the very least. Right. 16, 17. So in your head, you're thinking, oh, so the, the male guy that owns the place is maybe like a 45-year-old Ben Stiller or someone like that. No. She is apparently having a sexual relationship yeah. with like every guy that was 60 years old in every movie from 1950. Picture like, picture fucking grandpa from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's basically like grandpa with like golf shorts and long black socks. A big cigar. Like, yeah. Gra- golf short plaid golf shorts dress socks and like loafers she never once makes it seem like she's after like some kind of like like we don't she never says to somebody like, like money oh, he's loaded she right. literally seems to sexually be into yeah this fucking weird but she's not telling guy. anybody remember like judy's like oh who are you going on a date with she's like it's a secret like no but that's the worst part is every time mel comes around her she's flirting with him clearly Right, like you oh, know, yeah. and, then, and then at one point later, she's asking him. She's like, "What about that dinner you promised me?" And he's like, 9 30 tonight." I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, Wait like it'd be one thing if he was hitting on her and she was just like, "Oh my god," or even like leading him on and then making fun of him behind her behind his back. Like she's instigating the oddness, the peculiarity. Yeah, yeah, the very this, that whole bit's very peculiar. Uh, yeah. So we we kind of see the dynamic of how this is going. Uh, <laughs> And again, as Larry said earlier, it's not a joke. All the kids in this in this camp are generally very antagonistic towards each other. Oh, dude, this is the angriest group. There is so everybody's so mad at this camp. Yeah. Except for like that one, like except for fuck. Oh, we didn't even talk about uh, what's his name with the fucking pecker shorts uh, and the you know jai. Jack, he's like the original Jersey Shore guy. The, the dude with the quarter shirt on? No, not the dude with the quarter shirt. The uh, the, the the main the the main dude, the fucking jacked guy with the tiny tight shorts. The counselor, the counselor. Yeah, right I can't. Like he's nice. Yeah. And then the girls have the one nice one who keeps sticking up for Angela. Everybody else in this camp is an asshole. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> It's brutal. <laughs> even even Ricky, who apparently is your hero, I is, like Ricky. Is a bit high strung though. Oh, totally, <laughs> yeah. totally. He's I, always, I agree. He's always fist clenched, ready to fight somebody. Like, come on, you were a Ricky when you were like thirteen years old. I, I know you, you were a Ricky. There's no doubt about it. No, you're right. There's no doubt about it. All so right. we follow these kids through some of their regular activities, dinner, and during one of the first dinners, or maybe the first dinner. Angela's just not eating. So no. the, the Long Island guy, the, the, the bulky Long Island dude comes over and is like, what's the matter, Angela? You don't yeah. like none of the food? How about I take you into the into the freezer? That was Ronnie. His name was Ronnie. That's right. Ronnie. Ronnie. How, how yeah. about we go in and I'll take you into the freezer and we'll get you something to eat that you'll like real nice, huh? And she's like mousy, just like nodding. So he takes her in there and drops her off with, uh, with the guy her. who likes Baldy. Yeah. Right? Who Baldy. immediately... Tries to take his belt off in front he of her. immediately tries to fuck her in the walk-in. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's like, Hey, why don't you come in here? We'll find you something. And then he's like, I got something for you, and starts taking his fucking pants off. Ricky fucking... saves the day. Ricky yeah. comes in, stops him. Gets himself killed. Yeah, gets jacked up against the wall by this guy. Right. And uh and then takes Angela and gets out of there. Yeah. Fucking cook punches the fucking box of fruit or whatever. He punches the boxes of like fucking Quaker oat <laughs> granola. Yeah. yeah, the kids aren't gonna have any granola all summer because it's fucking right. lunatic. Yeah, Larry, you have worked in uh, restaurants. You yeah. have gone to culinary school. Yeah, is a pot as big as the pot he uses true? Is that a real fucking thing? 
How I've, many gallons is that pot? How tall was that pot? I've worked in restaurants. Like you said, I went to culinary school. I've worked in commercial kitchens where we've cooked for a lot of people. I've never in my life seen a pot that tall. So he's going to cook up some corn. And apparently he's going to cook up all the corn. Because yeah. this pot is easily th- the three feet tall. It's it's more. I think it's I think four, it's five. I, you think it's, it's about as tall as Spud Webb? Maybe like, it's yeah, five foot. Was five foot six? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking. It's big. That's like the tallest pot I've ever fucking. It's seen. on top of the oven, and there's only enough room between the top of it and the ceiling to drop one ear of corn at a time. Ear of corn at a time in the sideways. 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 The Earl Jones guy says we're gonna all go out to get something to drink. He says I'm gonna get this corn started. Uh, the water's been boiling, so he's he, he decides to start dropping the corn, and he's got to get on a step stool. Yeah, logistically, I don't even know how. And he's a the, big guy. He's a super big guy. Yeah, he gets up on the step stool. And he's dropping corn in, and then we go to what we get in this movie, which is like a first person perspective from the killer. Yeah, and we see the killer's hands come up behind him and try to push him into. This five foot tall, right? Is that what he's trying to do? I'm not. I'm not positive what, yeah. what the what the killer was what trying to accomplish. All I know was that he had plenty of time to just hop off that fucking stool. I thought the same thing. I thought you know there's... maybe just I don't know instead of screaming and trying to grab onto things and pouring water all over yourself. Just take a step down. He's literally yelling at the person. like, stop yeah. what you're doing. What are you doing? Why are you doing? How come and then doing? offering them an ice cream sundae. I'll make yeah. you an ice cream sundae. Like just step down, yeah. step down. Like he, he doesn't step down. He eventually topples over yes, and he and pulls, pulls <laughs> the pot with him. What do you, how many gallons do you think? Oh God, I don't know. Fucking 60. 60 was gigantic boiling gallons of hot corn and water. Yeah. Pour all over this dude. Now here is where I think the first impressive bit of this movie is, is the effects of him like being, they burnt, look good. Look real good. And like, there were, there were like pulsating yes. blisters. Like they looked good. I watched, I have the, uh, I have, uh, I don't know who, who did it a couple years ago, but like, like a Blu-ray and I watched the making of afterwards Oh, and wow. they had a couple of, um, at the time, decent effects houses working on these effects. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. Like his skin's pulsating. His eyes look red. He's just screaming. It's probably and, the best bit of makeup in the movie. Yes. If I had to think about it, which is smart, you know, do use your first, you, you know, blow it all on the first kill. So everybody's drawn in because that's, uh, yeah, that was a good looking one. Apparently there was another effect and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about that was used for an actual shot of judy's death that they cut out because it was too graphic oh sure yeah because i i wouldn't want to see that just seeing what we saw we'll get to that seeing what we saw was enough yeah. so this guy's burned up they take him away he's still alive mel comes over and did you and- notice that the guy screamed forever oh yeah like as soon as the water fell on him he screamed and then we get the fade fade out and back in uh, fade to black and then back in letting you know that a significant amount of time has passed. And now he's completely gauzed right. from head to toe yet still screaming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, somebody shut this guy up already. Like, yeah. That's enough. That's enough. Or get him the fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, they wheel him out and uh, Mel's well, concerned yeah. that he, so he pays, he pays uh, James Earl Jones's dad, an extra fifteen dollars a week, right? Or fifty five dollars, fifty five, fifty dollars a week for him. Yeah, fifteen dollars a week for his cronies yeah. to not say anything about what happened here. Right, he's so, worried about the the camp. Like he doesn't want parents, especially, finding out that somebody got injured. Which it's like I was like, why? It's not a big fucking deal. A guy gets hurt in the kitchen. That shit happens all. And the time. he didn't die. He he right. You know, he, he got fucked up. But he didn't die. Right. I I do like you know when he's like, but what about Ronnie's like, but what about his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah. the the guy's like, oh, too early to tell. How is it too early to tell? Yeah. Did I, you not look at his eyes? What, what 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 does the guy say? He's like, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never seen something so bad. Oh. Like. 
do do cops say that shit to like people no. at the site? I would think I you'd think. be just just be very demure and be like, yeah. and then when you go and talk to your cop buddies, be like, that was fucked. But yeah. maybe not tell people that are involved with the victim, like, holy shit, I'd be surprised if he ever fucking if he lives through this. Yeah. Um, so we we start we go through more camp and we have fun. Like there's a fun baseball game as we mentioned before. We get yeah. to see one of the one of the young one of the campers has got a shirt on that's only a collar. It's it's the short the shortest shorts ever and just a collar. He Dude, looks like that, fucking Kermit the Frog. That was the angriest baseball game. It was. I love I love you know what my favorite part of that baseball game was how fucking crazy each team was against each other and then putting money down on it. Be like we're gonna kick your fucking ass and then the first pitch is thrown and it's underhand fucking yeah. soft toss. I'm like what? Yeah, you guys are you guys are getting all hyped up over an underhand soft toss game. Like if if Jalen showed up, she would have beaten them all single handed. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Specifically, the kid in the outfield playing fucking like arcade boxing on the who, who actually made the catch though. He, he does did, make the catch. Good he for did him. Make the catch. Yeah, he did make the catch. But uh, there were some of those, and mostly on the counselor side. Who their swings were like, dude? I don't know that that guy's ever held a baseball. Yeah, back. no, like, he's never he's never played ball before. <laughs> like, holy shit! So we also get a little bit of uh, nighttime skinny dipping action with a bunch of these kids and some of the girls, and this is where we get our next kill. Larry, explain what happens to uh to the metalhead kid here. This dude, I, he they get high. He gets high. Yeah. So the the counselors are trying to plan a skinny dip. And they're going to ask the girls, like, hey, you know, come out for a skin. It's a, the strangest setup to try to get some girls to get naked with you. It's a really, really strange setup. But he kind of skips that and goes and gets a girl and says, hey, you want to go out in the fucking canoe? And I guess she said yes, because the next scene, he's rowing the canoe. And she's kind of just laying on the front of it, the bow out of stern. I don't know what that's called. I'm not a sailor. Oh, no that's the uh, the port or uh, or starboard. Port. Port. <laughs> starboard. Isn't that a wine? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, we're going to get fucking killed for that by some sailor listening or something. So he's rowing and he's got her on the, and you're like, hey, good for you, metalhead. You fucking, and then it, like a fucking jerk off. He's, he's like, oh, I don't. Watch out, fucking sea snakes and snapping turtles. And then he fucking starts tipping the boat. She's like, stop it. And he fucking capsizes the boat. She falls in the water, calls him an asshole, swims away. And I'm like, what a what a fucking idiot. You blew the hole. You could have. You could have gotten laid. You could have gotten were, laid. You, you would have gotten you know, laid. Yeah, he was, he was on his way. He certainly didn't help his chances by fucking no. dipping her into the goddamn water. That hasn't ever helped anybody's chances. No. Ever. So so then now the canoe is upside down. And he realizes that he can go under it and he sticks his head out. And for some reason, he's calling her name from underneath the, yeah. the, the canoe. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. Um, but then, you know, you get the, the killer and... Uh, I don't think they show. I don't think they show him back of the head. Killed. We was that the, what it was? The kill. The the killer comes up under the canoe. Yeah, we see the back of the head, and then I think the, they find the body later. I on. remember when they find the body because the yeah. the snake crawls out of the. Yeah, and he looked pretty good too. He looked that was a yeah. good yeah that was a good looking corpse, uh, which you don't you don't say that often. No, uh, that's no, no, no. nobody. You, you're the first person to ever say that. <laughs> no, I might have been. That's uh, a good looking corpse. That's a good looking corpse. Uh, so they did, they did a good job with that. Yeah. I didn't remember the actual, if we saw the actual kill or not, but that's how, that's how metalhead, uh, Mike, let's just call him Mike metalhead. Mike dies. Yeah. Unfortunate for him. So through, through the course of these kills, it, it, we start to just go through more and more, more yeah. and more people start to get, uh, killed. There's yes. some pretty inventive ones. Uh, the killer at one point locks one of the bully, uh, counselors or kids in a bathroom and drops a fucking counselor. Yeah. Drops yeah. a bee's nest in there. Um, yeah. so and fuck, he was stung to death within 45 seconds. Didn't take long. And when I say stung to death, like when they showed his arm, it was just huge purple bubbles. I was like, Nope, nothing, nothing would sting you like that. That yeah. quickly, maybe in the paleozoic era, <laughs> <laughs> They were Jurassic bees. <laughs> <laughs> not, not today. Like that's not gonna, there's no B 
bees, just murder wasps, or those things, murder hornets. Murder hornets, yeah. Those wouldn't even do that. Like the guy looked, it looked crazy. And then his face was covered by seven billion bees. Welcome like, to, to Jurassic bees. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, <laughs> these fucking fucking bananas. But what I've always loved, it takes. I don't know, seven or eight murders for people to really get concerned. Yeah, it, no, like, there's <laughs> certainly the the murder to con- concern ratio of the of it's Mel off. Yeah. and the camp counselors and everybody yeah. there is like, okay, well, we've had a couple of incidents. No, no, no. Yeah. Someone no. was killed. Yeah, people are dying left and right. In a canoe. Somebody was killed yeah. by bees. Yeah. Right? Like, and then we, you know, we get a few more coming yeah. out. There come there comes a point where eventually Mel starts to heavily suspect that it's Ricky because right. Rick, because just in his head, Ricky's like a fucking kind of a punk. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, Paul, Ricky's friend who thinks that Judy has like the nice bazongas has yeah. started to develop a romance with Angela. Right. Like yeah. He gets the first words out of her. Right. He brings her a candy bar at some point. She's being ritualistically bullied by Judy and by Meg yeah. to the point where they and the um, other girls it, it's a and the guys like yeah fucking the metalhead was screaming at her. he's like she's a fucking idiot oh yeah Look yeah yeah when her. they when they go to the dance the metalhead is like fucking freaking out on her um, yeah because she doesn't want to dance with him everybody gets so mad at her because she won't talk to them like what the fuck is wrong with you and start sh- Meg starts shaking her at one point like, calm down. She just doesn't want to talk to you. It is you're weird. A fucking, you're a fucking asshole. I, there were quiet kids in my like elementary school. I never wanted to fucking beat the shit Did out you, of them. To you be never quiet. shook. No, you never shook one and threw them in a lake. No, no. Well, no? <laughs> so they throw. They eventually throw her in a lake. Yeah. Which, which will tie into the ending of the movie. But she is begging not to be thrown into the lake, mm-hmm. and they toss her in the lake. Right. And Ricky gets there too late, and this is where one of the counselors. <laughs> says to Meg, you're a real peckerhead mm-hmm. uh, because everybody just sees this behavior. So all these things are happening. Murder, death, kill, Mayhem. Angela, humiliation. Mel trying to fuck counselors. Now, I think it's important to bring this up mm-hmm. because when the killer strikes every time, we are shown the killer's hands. Yeah. And the killer's hands are clearly masculine, right? Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is... Veins veins not, not hair but veins right. they're they're male hands right and these are some tricks that when we get to the end re- and reveal the killer i'll explain to you what they did a few times but i thought that was pretty interesting because i did not know that until this watch and watching the making up mm-hmm. so all this stuff is going on mel's starting to get really concerned uh but only for his camp only for what's going to happen to the camp not he concerned does, for the kids he, yeah he, he not does concerned not. for the kids who are dead Right. Not concerned for the rest of the kids possibly getting murdered like the last 24 have in the past day. He's concerned that parents will find out and financially ruin him. Right. He does not want to be financially ruined. Because apparently this is a windfall. I, I oh, can't. no. He's, he's Mr. Big Shot. He, he's acting like it. He's acting like, the you know, if the camp gets closed down, like, that's it. He eats, Salis- millions. he eats Salisbury steak every night and bangs Meg every third night. This guy's living the high life, right? He's got nice cigars. Nice cigars. His shorts are the, the sky bluest I've ever yep. seen. Yep. Um, plaid dress socks. He looks so good. Mel, Mel is, is kicking it. Hair's a fucking mess. It is a fucking absolute <laughs> mess. And I, yeah, big fucking lips wrapped around that cigar. He is just, oh. he is a grotesque human being. And I'm sorry to the actor who passed away prior. You played, right. you played a hell of a role. But you're um, right. At some point, he decides that, that Ricky, Ricky is is the one to fucking blame for all of this. So he has a hot date with Meg. Meg tells Judy, I'm going to go take a shower in the other cabin because this one here is occupado. Uh, Meg goes in to take a shower. This is the only knife kill in the whole, in the whole movie, uh, right? She She's taking a shower and she gets stabbed through the, through the wall, wall and then like kind of ripped down. And yeah. then her body is kind of forgotten in there because everybody's leaving for the night. Mm-hmm. Larry, you got to walk us through Judy's death real quick because yeah. Judy gets it next. Yeah. But before you walk us through Judy's death, mm-hmm. I, I read this uh, doing research on this, but you know who Jane Krakowski is? She no. was on 30 Rock. She played oh. so she, in, in Vacation. She's the one that says um, 
my my dad's the best French kisser. She's Uncle Eddie's kid, the blonde. Oh my god, yes, yes, yeah. Well, I know her, but I don't know her now. Like, okay, she was on Thirty Rock, and she's okay. an adult. She's an adult actress. She does a lot of commercials and stuff. She was originally hired to play Judy, oh. and dropped out of it because of the death scene. She thought it was too much. So what happens to Judy? Because it, it is too much. Yeah. <laughs> so. So Judy is, she's laying in her bed, right? That's right. Mel had just come in and she told Mel, uh, Mel come in looking for Meg. And she told Mel, oh, she went to the other shower. And then after Mel leaves, somebody else comes to the door and she can't see who it is. You just kind of see an outline. And then like happens several other times in this as the killer uh, gets closer it's like oh it's you like that's they all know who the killer is when the killer gets close and it's like right. what do you want uh and the, <laughs> the killer just decks her just punches her right across the fucking face and knocks her out cold judy's laying on the bed unconscious <clears throat> and uh apparently has a fully heated up curling iron uh next to her which the killer picks up uh the one hand puts a pillow over judy's face and then with the other hand uh we're led to believe because all we see is shadow of hands on the wall and we hear some screaming through a pillow we're led to believe that she inserts the uh steaming (laughs) curling iron in the holiest of holes we call that a sizzle puss where I'm from. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I don't think would kill you. Oh, I, I, I think your heart would explode. I think that you pain. Think she, you think she died from, uh, you think she had a heart attack from the pain of. I, I, I don't even, I don't have a vagina. No. Um, but like just that scene. But if you did, that would be turn. okay. My because school, we, no, it, we're, we're very accepting. It's 2024 yes. and it's the pint. So and, if you had a vagina, we would be okay with that. Uh, but I don't. Uh, if I did though, I can imagine that being so incredibly horrifying that you sure. just, you, you probably would just bail on life if that's <laughs> even a possibility. So Judy right. has now been, uh, been killed. So this thing is just, is flashing through and through and through. Mm-hmm. Mel is out in the archery range and very much like, Oh, hold Mer- on. But first Mel finds Meg. Oh, right. Mel finds Meg in the shower, which right? is one of my favorite has always been. I'm, I'm going to go back to what my father, God rest his soul, used to love to make fun of my mother, God rest her soul, for the movie choices. And I just remember, he, he, tears coming out of his face as fucking Mel opened, didn't even get to open the curtain and it was like Meg's body was just thrown. Yeah. Like thrown at him. Like ejected. And my, <laughs> basically like, like an ejector seat. And my father was like, hold on. So you're telling me that she's just been propped at such an angle that when he walked in, she just sprung out. Her body just sprung out. And I just remember my mother having to pause it and just fucking arms crossed stop making fun of my movies <laughs> you pick the movies from now on you know oh yeah and then my father would come home with like a fucking you abbott and costello meet fucking dracula <laughs> clint eastwood in firefox <laughs> yeah the battle of iwo jima or so hamburger yeah. hill <laughs> hamburger hill yeah so uh yeah so mel runs out to the archery range and well, do you remember why he runs out to the archery range? He's looking for Ricky. But he's looking for Ricky because now he because now he he said it as soon as I'm, Meg's body was ejected kid. from the shower, he's like, "Oh my god, I'm sorry, Meg. I can't believe it. He did this to get back at me because now he thinks that Ricky is killing these people to ruin him. I don't know why. Right? He thinks that. I don't remember. You know, I know that Ricky's been. Uh, you know, he's he's already once accused Ricky and he shook him down at the lake. This was while Angela was getting through. This is what prevented him from saving Angela from getting thrown in the water. Right, right, right. Was, was, him, yes. 
Yeah, he's like, this is your fault, blah, blah, blah. And Ricky's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But now that Meg is dead, he thinks that somehow Ricky knew about his relationship with Meg and killed her to get back at him. So now he's on a mission. He's got to go find Ricky. He's got to end this once and for all. I think he even says that I have to end this. And, and he thinks uh, he finds him because he, well, well, he, well, says he does find him. He, he does find Ricky, but Ricky's knocked out, right? Is he knocks part- Ricky out. He knocks Ricky out. You're he right. beats okay. the shit out of Ricky. He does find Ricky and fucking tackles him to the ground and just start like literally like the two hands just bashing on his face. Boom, boom, boom. And he's like, I knew it was you. Yeah, we're now we're going to stop this. And uh, yeah, he just he beats the fucking piss out of Ricky. And then I think he sees or hears something. And yeah. that's when he heads to the. uh to the archery range and leaves. He, I think he thinks he killed Ricky. And so then he held, uh, heads off to the archery range where we get another, Oh, it's you. Oh, like, it's you. You yeah. know? Yeah. And then he gets an arrow in the throat. So yeah. it's not, it's not, which Ricky. doesn't look as good as the previous. No, you, you can tell that that uh, throat is a different color than his face. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. look as good as the previous effects. Now, uh, just to go back a little bit, I want to mention that, Angela is mad at Paul because Paul. Oh, we didn't say that. Yeah. In a moment of weakness, kisses Judy and it was Judy manipulating Paul. But so there's a little love triangle thing going on there. And Angela is kind of mad at Paul. I want to throw that in because it's kind of important. So, yeah, even though all this has happened and like people aren't checking in or anything, the counselors decide (laughs) that it's a good night to send one of the counselors to the beach with all the little kids. Right. So. He goes with all the little kids, and this is where this movie goes hard, <laughs> because she kill, does she kill them all? Or oops, sorry, yeah. does does the killer kill them all? Like yeah. all little kids get killed. The guy she wakes sees, up right. Uh, she, now you got me, now you got me pronouning. Yeah, uh, pronouns. the killer sees a hatchet, and I get all the kids were asleep in their sleeping bags, and uh, they don't show it. It's an off camera kill, but they go back to it, and they're all hacked to all hacked to little bits. Because the, the counselor wakes up and finds them, right? Like he he's not dead, or does someone go out there to find them? I think somebody else finds them. Okay, so they're all dead. Yeah. So finally, we get to the point where Angela and we Paul, get the kind of the Friday the Thirteenth part where everybody's finding bodies. Right. Somebody finds uh, Judy under the thing. Somebody finds the kids. You know, it's that Friday the Thirteenth uh, part where oh God, now it's all happening. Here's all the body, body here, body now, there. And I, I shouldn't call that a Friday the Thirteenth because Halloween did it first. But what yeah. neither one of those movies, Friday the Thirteenth or Halloween, did was have a cop who has a mustache that goes to a fake mustache. Motherfucker! First time I ever noticed it. Oh Jesus, dude! I noticed that from time number one. Nope, it's I've seen. Dude, I was watching it with the kids. <laughs> I'm such a bad dad. <laughs> I was watching it with the kids, and I had to stop it and say, I've never noticed this mustache. I don't understand how I've seen filming? Sleepaway Camp like a hundred times, and I've never noticed this taped on fucking, it looks like somebody cut off a piece of one of those coonskin caps, like the Daniel Boone hats, it's and awful. just put it on. I'm like, why? Why would they? They do stopped this? filming. They stopped filming. <laughs> they brought him back. He had shaved his mustache. And oh, is that for, what it is? So for continuity, they throw another mustache on him, and it looks fucking awful. So the cop has pay attention to the cop's mustache. If you're anything like Larry, who's uh, obviously a horror fucking uh, giant fan, and didn't notice, maybe you didn't notice. So next time you watch it, pay attention to the cop's mustache before and after, uh, in the same like set of scenes. Uh, it is clearly a real mustache in, in one bit, and then it is clearly a fucking like a gopher's tail in another bit. It's awful. <laughs> That's the counselors, amazing. the counselors realize everything's going on. They're finding all the bodies. Angela and yeah. Paul reconnect and, and decide to go on a moonlit light stroll uh, on the beach. Yeah, this is where everything comes to a head because eventually we get the two good counselors right. Uh, Giuseppe uh, D. D. Caminuclio Ronnie. from from Poor Ronnie body. from uh from fucking Long Island, yeah. and the oh. the female one who has been kind of kind all the time, and they but find the nice one. Yeah. what like you, we see a character yeah. naked on the beach, and it seems like this character is is like I don't know um like holding a person like an infant, 
Yeah, but, like well, it's like it's like it's like the she's laying with her his head in her lap. Right, and but she's it, but, like cradling her his head and like fucking rubbing his head. But when we say head, we mean head because yeah, like the top, like the one on the on your neck. Like, like well, no, but I mean, like it's not like this person's oh. laying across this person's lap. Yeah. This head has been decapitated. Yeah, and it's, as the counselors are realizing what's happening. We get like the incredible line reading from Ronnie where he's, oh my God, it's Angela. She's a boy. And yeah. Larry, what, what do we see? Which is like one of the most iconic things in horror probably. Yeah. So the counselors stumble upon her spoiler alert. I think, I think, I think I spoiled this like 16 seconds in, but uh, the counselors stumble upon her. She stands up. You see Paul's head kind of just roll away, um, and that has been severed. And she's, you know, she does the iconic. It's it's now an iconic image, or like she's looking to the side and making a hissing noise, like with her mouth wide open. It's an uh, animal. But the camera, noise. yeah, the the camera pans down, and uh, Angela's got a dick. Angela's, uh, what's up, with dick girl? Yeah. <laughs> Angela, what's up, with your Angela's dick girl? girl? Angela's <laughs> packing meat. Uh, so, what we realize uh, through a flashback, you know, is that that day, eight years prior, on the lake, the father died and the girl died. And the survivor was the son who went to live with Aunt Martha. Peter. Yep, who Situation went to live with Aunt brother. Martha, and Aunt Martha said, uh, you know, I've always wanted a little girl. Uh, you know, it wouldn't do to have another boy in the house. Oh, that wouldn't no, do. No. That wouldn't do, that wouldn't do at all. So Aunt Martha had Peter dressing up as a girl and pretending to be a girl ever since the accident that killed her dad and her brother. So Angela was Peter all along and Peter had a Peter and there it was for all of us to see on the screen in 1983. Yeah. Yeah. I, I truly wish I did not know the ending of the movie before I saw it. Cause I think it would have been more impactful, but it's still a creepy scene because it's a life cast of, Felissa Rose's face, yeah, made into a mask, worn by a college student that I guess they got through a paper ad or something, who had to get crazy drunk to do it. The animal noises were like obviously overlaid sure. in, in in post, but like it's a very iconic image. And if you if you go and follow like Felissa Rose on Instagram, like she must be a great sport because like, that's like her thing with pictures is like everybody that takes a picture with her. Oh yeah. Clearly wants that face. And she's, you know, they joke about like, if you make a face enough, it's going to get locked into it. She's in trouble <laughs> because yeah. she's got to do this a thousand times a day at cons and everything. But so yeah, it's a shocking ending. And I mean, and also 1983 and I don't want to, I don't want to misidentify anything, but we have like trans stuff happening, right? Like it, it's, it's, pretty crazy it's pretty forward for its time i think yeah uh and i think that's pretty impressive um i do want to point out something i said before was in all the scenes where the killer is shown at all all of those the hands and the body so like when we see from judy's point of view we see the silhouette of what we know now is angela it's actually jonathan tierston who played ricky in a dress with a wig on when yeah. we see the head pop up underwater under the canoe. It's just him from behind. All the shots of the hands are him. So mm -hmm. he was, and, and in the interview I saw with him on the making of, he was thrilled because he wasn't the killer, but he got to play the killer at the same time. So, and, and they fooled you that way because we never see close ups of Angela's hands really, or arms, but they would look like that because she's a, she's a boy, right? Like boy. in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a, What's up with that dick, girl? That's that's what's going on there. So, all right. So that's 1983's Sleepaway Camp. We don't talk about box office in these episodes. We mentioned it earlier. It made 11 million, so very good. But we got to do it. Favorite kill time. Let's talk about it. 
thoughts from my wife. Fuck you and die. Larry, what is your favorite kill? There's the, we a lot of episodes we do. There's some hard to pick ones because some of the movies we do aren't like a lot of kills. This one has some good kills. You know, I got to go with Artie, even though I'm not sure it's a kill. The cook. Okay. I don't right. know. I don't know if he died, but let's say he died. We, we can, we can say that he died of his injuries. I hope he did because yes. he's that's a why it's my, that's why it's my favorite kill. Like if there was ever anybody in a movie that needed, that deserved to get boiled alive, it's that guy. Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, he's, uh, he needed to go. I, I needed, uh, Darth Vader's dad to run that kitchen. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have any more of that guy. Yeah. That was, uh, that was enough. So that's, so Artie being, uh, bo- basically boiling himself alive. Cause he's the fucking moron who pulled the water onto himself. Um, uh, that's my favorite kill. Okay. Um, in a world where the Judy kill exists, I want to say that. But I'm going to say one I think that's even like m- maybe it wouldn't be on most people's radar, but the shot is so impressive to me. It's the speedboat going over the dad because they like show yeah. like it rolling over him and you could kind of see like the outboard motor hit him in the head and it's just hardcore. Like it, it doesn't like the camera doesn't angle away. We see this boat hit this guy and then go over him and kind of just run the fuck over him. And I think that's super impressive. Again, the Judy kill is way gross, even though you don't see it. Uh, So that gets an honorable honorable mention. That's a hardcore kill. But I'm going to go with the dad getting killed by the speedboat uh, in this one. I I just think it's it's uh, it's pretty good. And and obviously the after effect is good, too. Like his body just floating and then that little life vest floating by. Uh, So I, I like that one. All right. Let's rate this thing. That guy who spent six weeks in the bathroom got a 91. <laughs> Larry, what are we rating Sleepaway Camp on? Dicks. Dicks. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, right. All right. That's <laughs> very That's, fair. Where, where else, what else would we rate it on? It's got to be dicks. So, so how many zero dicks being, are we giving Sleepaway Camp? Zero being <laughs> the worst thing ever. Five being the best thing ever. Quarter and half scale dicks are optional. Uh, I'll go first. Um, What's worse than a half a dick? Probably a quarter know. of a dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that's easy. A tenth of a dick. I don't know. Um, that's a situ- That's a situation. That is a- oh GTL. No, um, hey. I like this movie a lot. Um, this was one that was kind of like uh, not on my radar at all. And then probably when Larry showed this thing. Whenever it was, uh, you know, I knew the ending because I think everybody knows the ending of this movie. I think it's I think it's just one of those. It's like it's like the sixth sense. It's like one of those like everybody knows the ending. But whether or not you've seen it or not is another thing. So I went and saw it and I just fell in love with this low budget movie with great dialogue delivered by kids like like there, there aren't any counselors or, you know, campers really where you're like, well, that's a 28 year old. No, Felissa Rose is clearly 13. Jonathan Tierston was 17, but he looks younger. Um, yeah. So so even if he's like high on the age range, he's still right in there. Good kills. I like the fact that much like Friday the 13th, it's a whodunit, right? Like, and much like Friday the 13th, it's got a great like answer as to who done it, right? You know, like it's Jason's mom, and here's the reason why. And in this one, it's Angela. And it's not Angela. She's Peter. And here's the reason why. And we we give you this iconic, shocking image at the end, along with the explanation as to how this happened, all within one minute, right? There's a, there's a scene we didn't mention a little bit earlier on that's very weird where we see, like, like Peter, Angela's dad in bed with his Oh, wife. yeah. When uh, Paul is trying to make out with her on the right on the beach or whatever, she's remembering the time that her and her brother caught uh her dad and her dad's lover making out or something and they're standing there giggling and they're and they're like sitting on bed like looking at each other and like there's there's like a heavy aspect of some weirdness here but um good kills it's just a fun movie uh this is one that i I like to pop on 
like I, I watched this a couple days ago and it's a perfect like maybe end of summer uh, uh, horror movie. It just has that feel. Uh, I'm going four stars. I'm going four dicks. Uh, four dicks. Four big old hard Angela Cox um, for this one. I, I enjoy this one quite a bit and uh, I, I will watch this one uh, uh, every summer uh, from here on out because it's just a fun watch. Larry, what do you give Sleepaway Camp? Yeah, I, I, I find, especially as, as I get older, that the the ones my mom picked just, you know, hold a sentimental <laughs> sentimental uh, love for me. Um, and, and you know what? Sleepaway Camp, even though it doesn't always uh, make the most of sense, um, still, it, like you said, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the, the dialogue is not good. But fitting for kids of that age, uh, the kills are great. I could have, I could have dealt with less pedophilia. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't need, <laughs> I didn't need that much. You know, because uh, even like even Mel with with Meg, like that was even. Oh, that's know, pedophilia. Like said, yeah, He's a hundred over sixteen, right? Like like sixteen ish. Like I, you know what? I'd like to think maybe she's eighteen, and and that makes it a little bit better. But who knows? She's gonna have to know. to get his dick out. She's gonna have to unbuckle like a truss. There's no doubt, yeah. right? Like, yeah, he's yeah. old. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah, I find a lot of the outfits disturbing. <laughs> yeah, you uh, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this movie, um, especially Ronnie's, but also there's men with half shirts that are above their nipples. Just collars. Just collars. Yeah, it's basically just collars. There's almost no shoulder there. It's just uh yeah, but and all that aside, it's still a great movie. It's still a lot of fun. Um I don't care that I know the ending. I still get giddy every time it's about to happen. Uh and I'm always like, "Oh, I just want I wish somebody was watching this with me for the first time." Like that was that was great to me at that show when I screened it and I asked and it seemed like maybe a third of the audience raised their hand when I said, who's never seen this. And that to me was fantastic because I knew that for the first time they were going to get to see that dick on screen and just be like, what the fuck, <laughs> what the actual fuck it just happened. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a great thing. Um, rewatch for a movie that, you know, people, a lot of people think relies on its uh, sort of twist ending. The rewatch factor is high. Oh, it, I agree. It really is. Yeah. Which is, which is rare for a movie with a twist ending, right? Once you know the twist, a lot of these movies, it's like, why would you watch it again? Um, but the rewatch factor is high on Sleepaway Camp. Go the same amount as you. I'm going to say it's four dicks. Four, four dicks. Four good stiff dicks. Nice. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that four dicks at girl? <laughs> All right. So that's it. That's sleepaway camp. That's our end of uh, summer special here on scary Larry's house of horrors. Now next month, September, good stuff coming on the pint, but October is all horror. October. We will be doing nothing but horror episodes. Uh, I recorded one so far with uh, Stu, where we talked about Halloween H2O, but Larry's coming back. We're going to be doing our Halloween episode on the 50th anniversary of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We're going to be doing the first episode of season four of Scary Larry's House of Horrors, where we talk about Hammer films. We'll be doing the, uh, what is it called? The Devil Rides Out? Yep. The Devil Rides Absolutely. Out. That's up episode number one. Whole bunch of other stuff. So please come back for that. But very important, right in the middle of October, right in the middle of spooky season, Larry has his next show coming up. Uh, over there at Strand and Seymour. Larry, you announced it last week at your last show. What is the date and what is the next show? The date is October 19th, and it's a double feature that people have been asking me for for years. Uh, so finally doing it. I figured Halloween is a good time to do it, and it's the Rob Zombie films House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. If you haven't, uh, go go and check out The Pint. Uh, on Patreon, the Insider, uh, Patreon slash the Pint, two fifty a month. You can go back to last year when Larry and I talked about House of a Thousand Corpses and uh, and the the overall oh, ridiculousness yeah. of that movie. Yeah, we talked oh, about yeah. that one. Maybe yeah, maybe this did. year, maybe me and you could squeeze out a Devil's Rejects before that and uh, and get that out sure. to the regular audience in uh, in October as well. Uh, all right, so that's it. 
This has been fun. Uh, don't forget to, what are the dates, Larry, for CT Horror Fest? Or uh, September 21st and 22nd, if that is indeed a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, All right. I'm bad with dates. I believe that's the dates, right? Yep, I'm right. 21st, 22nd. 21st, 22nd, and uh, we'll be at the Connecticut Convention Center up there in Hartford, and you can meet all sorts of cool people, uh, not limited to, but also including one Mr. Peter Weller from Buckaroo Banzai yeah. and RoboCop, and he's some kind of professor of something or another. But anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun as it always is. So until next time, see ya. Frank, we are leaving! You're